back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 14 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In the last episode, we learned about little bit of brief introduction about Angular framework. We saw about the features and some of the technical specifications of Angular. Today, we will do a quick brief intro about the complete version history. Now, why do you need it? You should be aware about some of the basics because that important from understanding perspective as well as if you're appearing in interviews or a career change this is something that you should be aware so let's get started and learn about the different versions of angular now before i get started i would request you to kindly bookmark this uh, tutorial playlist that would help you to navigate easily again if you have any doubts any questions if you need job support technical help training feel free to reach out to me at surya.arad at gmail.com if you like my work in this series please consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arc tutorials like we covered two episodes so far in this series first we talked about the frequently asked questions about angular if you are a fresher or a beginner please do check that out because that there are so much information that would help you then we learned about introduction today we'll talk about the complete version history all right, so what is Angular 14? Angular 14 is a, is a front-end framework that makes it easy to build applications for both web and mobile apps. Angular is an open source project sponsored by and primarily maintained by Google. Angular is a modern framework which is entirely built on TypeScript. But that was not the case always. That's where the question comes. So if you look at the history and the version history of Angular, Anything that was with Angular 1 or 1.x, last release was 1.6, that was referred to as Angular JS, right? Anything above uh, from Angular 2 onwards is called Angular. So you should know what's the difference between Angular JS and Angular. Angular JS is referred wherever there is version 1 till 1.6, 1 or till 1.6. Now, Angular 1 was written in a JavaScript based, right? It has limited capabilities. It was on based on an architecture of model view and view model, uh, model view controller, if you may say. But that was really messy, complicated, right? Almost 12 years back now, uh, which was initially released in 2010. Angular JS code was written in JavaScript. Okay, we don't do it anymore. We write it in TypeScript from version 2 onwards. So version 2 is a complete rewrite of the same from the same team. Now, remember the difference. Anything from Angular 2, we refer to it as Angular. Never use the word Angular JS. Angular JS is only version 1 till 1.6. Now, it was initially released in September 2016. And since then, every there is a releases every six months or so with minor bug fixes or feature enhancements. So that being said, uh, you would see that there would be around uh, close to 10, 12 releases that have happened uh, in those last six years. Now, some of the languages that we work with are ES5, ES6, TypeScript. Okay, you can choose anything to write Angular, but we primarily use TypeScript. Now, Angular 3 was skipped. The reason because of the version mismatch between, between Angular Core, Compiler, and Angular Router. Right? They were released as independent libraries, independent modules. But now they're all together. So Angular 3 version 3 was skipped. You should know this. Same way, Angular 4 was released. They added animations. They added a new router uh, renderer. They added uh, if-else conditions, etc. Uh, templates, basically. And then in Angular 5, uh, they released a much more stable build optimizer which would and they made uh, improvements to the compiler uh, HTTP module was deprecated instead HTTP client module was in introduced in angular 5 um, then there were new additions to angular forms like on blur submit etc rxjs 5.5 support was also released and then router lifecycle events were also launched in angular 5 and similarly, Angular 6 saw upgrades to CDK toolkit, Angular material uh, components were released so that you have a built-in uh, UI. And 
there is two new commands that were launched which is ng update and ng add in the cli so those are some of the major changes that happened um, in angular 6 in angular 7 uh, cli prompts were launched and uh, drag and drop feature virtual scrolling and dependency injections and upgrade to the new versions of typescript and rxjs were introduced uh, support for node 10 was added in angular 7 so if you're if you're on a certain node version and you want to upgrade so you should see the compatibility of the node version before you update in angular 8 um, different uh, differential loading was introduced by default uh, then there was a builder apis that were launched as part of cli workspace apis were launched and web worker support was launched in angular 8 now do you need to buy hard all these changes i don't think so i don't recommend it but as a practice you should be aware of them similarly angular 9 uh, we saw introduction of iv compiler uh, much smaller build sizes faster performance uh, improved classes and style binding was introduced um, new angular material components were launched as part of angular 9 in angular 10 new angular material components were launched uh, date range picker that was specifically and then support upgraded to typescript 3.9 uh, there were some default browser configurations that are already added in angular 10 angular 11 had automatic font inlining again bug fixes improved build and serving and finally um, the hot module replacement was um, updated from the core library angular 12 uh, passing context to HTTP interceptors, right? So it was a little tricky so far till Angular 12, but thanks to the team of Angular, uh, they made it easy now. Uh, you also have inline SAS uh, support for styling uh, through decorator, which is component decorator. Uh, then strict mode was enabled by default, which means that everything will be strictly typed and much better uh, catching of errors even before anybody. And then finally, production ready support for Webpack 5 is available in version 12. Angular 13, we saw some creation of dynamic new components that was released. IE 11 support has been deprecated, which means now IE 11 is no more supported. Uh, in Angular 13 also, they released the support for RxJS 7.4. That's now default for all the apps. Now, there were some improvements that are made to the accessibility uh, aspects of Angular. So that is also taken care. And finally, uh, restore history after cancel navigation. So that's something that was introduced as part of Angular 13. Finally, that brings us to the current uh, version, which is uh, Angular 14 that we are learning right now. So some of the major uh, changes that happened are now we have something called standalone components that we don't have to inject in any module or anything but we can use them directly we also have something called strictly type forms concept that's introduced we also have auto completion for angular cli we have advanced template diagnostics and also online angular dev tools so these are all the new things we will learn we will do hands-on for all of these and we will do practical examples as well as we move along in this particular series that's all brief uh, introduction and uh, version history of angular so far till the current version uh, so please make sure that you go back check each version uh, changes read through them for your own understanding so you know how it has evolved again like i said you won't be needing it on a practical day-to-day -day basis but knowledge is always good Thank you so much for joining in this episode. In the next episode, I will talk briefly about how to upgrade to Angular 14 and then we start with coding of actual from scratch for Angular 14. These are all important concepts, may sound boring, but you should be aware, you should have the knowledge of all of these concepts. So join me in the next episode where we'll talk about how to upgrade your existing application to Angular 14. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.